Dr. Al Larson. <clears throat> He's a um, electrical and computer engineer and uh, has taught at the U.S. AFA, which is the uh, Air Force, uh, and directed DFEE computer labs in 13 years in the Air Force, flew 406 combat missions in Vietnam, flight instructor, 13 years at Bell Lab, engineering supervisor, working on advanced product prototypes in 13 years as a commodities trader and a, an education an educational CTA he's developed his own system and uh, also his work is under the market astrophysics and chaos theory so what we, I think the best way to do, to let him explain further what he does in his original thinking, we're pleased to have Dr. Al Larson. Thank you. Thank you very much, Grace. It's a unique pleasure to be here. When Carol Mall called to invite me to speak at the first After Economics conference, she warned me that I would have critics from both science and astrology. Dealing with planets meant that many scientists would not speak to me. And that the astrologers, while they might like me because I'm sort of blessing what they do, would always be suspicious of me because I didn't understand astrology. Carol Mall, bless her soul, was dead right. Uh, I, I must say, though, that uh, between the astrologers uh, that I've gotten to know and the engineers, I much prefer the astrologers. Uh, you know, I, I, I am awed by people like uh, uh, Bill Meridian and Elfie Lavoie and Arch Crawford uh, who see things that I don't see. Uh, and what I'm going to talk about is just that, seeing things. Uh, what Carol Moore didn't, she pointed out my 13-year careers, and I'm now on number three, and I'm in year 12 of that number three, and I know from astrology that it's 13 years, because I had to figure out why my life kept taking these right turns. And, uh, but what's most important on this chart is 18 years I spent growing up in the Black Hills of South Dakota because it formed the basis for how I think. And I have been told, well, as a Bell Labs by a boss who fired me, and just sent me to a different department, that my thinking was orthogonal. Orthogonal means 90 degrees to the corporations. <laughs> In one lecture at Bell Labs, I asked a question from the audience. Uh, this guy is presenting his great, fantastic new switching system. And my question was, Re was answered with outrage, your thinking is dangerous to the companies. My question was, have you asked our customers about this? <laughs> so I, I, I demanded and got an apology for that one. But I have looked at markets and life differently because I was born to do that. Uh, and I finally found where you find the final answer. It's out here in space. One of my favorite websites is uh, Astronomy Picture of the Day. If you haven't been going to it every day, do it. It gives you something to look at that will completely take you out of your current uh, uh, comfortable space and show you how little we know about our universe. When we look at the universe, we only find four things. And I was struck by this. Time, mass, distance, and charge. Of those four things, only one thing, charge, is related to energy. And it didn't take me too long to figure out that astrology works because of energy. So I began a search to understand energy fields. And I'm going to now ask you all to stand up. Come on, up. You don't, you don't have to stand on your table, but, but, get, but get your chairs back away because I want you to teach you a little bit about energy. 
Follow what I do. Raise your hands. Now, kind of sit on your butt, but don't flex your knees too far. Now, bend down. Scoop up some energy in front of you. Pull it up in front of your chakras, up to the heavens. Release it. Down again. Back up. Release it. Everybody's getting it pretty good. Even Larry. We're not going to sing gospel music. No. We're not going to sing gospel music, but we're going to hear the music of the spheres. You know. Now, stop right here. Turn your hands comfortably, but still keep sitting like you're just loosely, knees flexed loosely. And just hold this position for a while. Close your eyes now and focus on the feeling in your fingertips. Does anyone feel anything in their fingertips, like a little tingling? Okay, if you're feeling a little tingling, tingling, that's what the Chinese call qi. Now, when you open your eyes so you can see my hands, rotate your hands to this. That was a, a qi gathering exercise. Now, this is a qi circulating exercise. Just turn your hands towards your chest, hold a circle, and feel the flow around. Do you feel the energy flowing around your arms? You might feel a little tingling going all the way around your arms. It circulates, and actually it circulates in both directions. Now, put your fingertips about two inches apart, lower your hands in front of you, and look through between them to the floor. Now pull them out and back together. And, notice, and stare through the gap between them onto the floor and see if you see any shimmering smoke trails or heat waves between your fingertips. Anyone see that? You are seeing your energy field. You are seeing the waves like heat waves coming off of a hot tin roof. This is the electrical field that you are in. If it weren't here, So, rather than show you a bunch of formulas, you can feel energy. That energy is physical. And I have found in markets, if I do my homework right, I not, might not be able to anticipate a move, but I can, I can track down the physical cause of moves. And my goal for doing that was trying to understand the processes by how all this worked. And the reason I would like to understand the processes, one, is because I am a curious soul. I grew up in the Black Hills, and to play, I went out and explored the Black Hills. I watched the seasons change. I watched the crocus pop up to the snow. I knew about snowflakes. I marveled at how they had six points, but they were never quite the same. They were geometric, but at the time, I didn't know they were also fractal. But I've developed my own line of thinking about how things work. But you know, sometimes it's not as difficult as everyone makes it out to be. One thing I like to do is get up and take a morning walk. My dog Ace requires it. And now he has a little buddy called Scout who really requires it. So sometimes I have to go three hours a day, or three times a day, I mean. If you go out on some mornings, you will discover a rising sign. In this case, this was Moon and Saturn and Venus rising in the east. The Magi saw the star rising in the east. Duh! Hey, it's been here a long time. And I've noticed that when we have a rising sign, then you go into day trade, I do like to day trade the e-mini. If you've taken your morning walk, you might be alert to the fact that rising sign will frequently tank the market. This one tanked it for two days. The biggest market top in our lifetime was clearly visible in the skies if you took your morning walk and watched Jupiter and, and Saturn coming together. I watched them for months. Every day, yeah, they're getting a little closer. Yeah, we're getting closer to the top. Gee, the astrologer said this. Gan said this. Is it really going to work? 
And the engineer in me says, well, what's the model say? See, every engineer needs a block diagram. So you have to understand, I, I, I have an artist in me, I have an engineer in me, I've, I've got an explorer, a few other people, so if I seem a little schizophrenic, it's because I have multiple personalities. <laughs> <laughs> but the engineer is very helpful because he says, look, you have to have a structure for this. And this is the model I've worked on for, oh, close to two or decades. The solar energy system creates energy that feeds into Earth's electric field, and that affects traders, and that affects markets, and that affects price. And if I'm going to uh, understand this and try to make some money, I ought to understand this model. Now, a lot of people like Larry, he doesn't have to understand everything. He doesn't have this karmic why question that I inherited. Larry says, I don't know why it goes up or down. I don't know why the Fibonacci ranges work, but I know they do, and I use them, and he makes money. So, you know, the, the best trader I know is sitting right there. So, <laughs> now the model of this is now starting to work its way into scientists actually noticing it. When I started in this work, uh, uh, if you called someone like Noah and asked for data, they wouldn't know why you wanted it, and if you dared to tell them, they wouldn't give it to you. <laughs> but I had that experience. But Years ago, my mentor, uh, Ev Garrett, uh, told me that he had extracted the orbital period of Mercury from the Consumer Price Index. And I said, you're crazy. He says, come over and I'll show you my calculations. And he's doing it on a handheld calculator. And I couldn't find anything wrong with his calculations. He simply took the the index noted the highs and lows, and they did this algorithm to measure the periods and averages and do a divided difference table. If you're uh, a programmer, you may have done one once upon a time. And it came out with the orbital period of Mercury accurate to four decimal places. The chances of that being random are zero. Well, not zero, but they're one over 10,000. Uh, pretty small. And I said, okay, how does this work? And he says, well, there's these papers by Luby and others written in the 30s uh, explaining how sunspots affect weather on Earth and things like that. And he says, as these planets go around the sun, they stir up the gas blobs that changes the radiation coming to Earth. That charges up our ionosphere, and that affects, those charges affect how people behave. You ever get giddy at full moon? or depressed at new moon, ions of full moon reflected back into the atmosphere. At new moon, they're trapped in front of the Earth. Every uh, good warrior knows you attack on new moon, but you have to do something special to get your own troops hyped up because everyone will be down, and you want to hit them while it's dark, and they are down. Uh, Chinese did that at Tiananmen Square because they're good astrologers. Now, so I said to uh, Ev, uh, there must be a, a way to program how much the planets stir up the sun. And he said, yeah, magnetodynamic equation. And he gave me a reference. And I said, I'll go program it for you. And that was the start of me trying to write a little program. And I wrote a little program that generated this curve here. This one goes up and down. By the time I was done with that piece of research, I, I called this thing the master clock. Because you can take every cycle in Dewey's cycle for foundation of studies, and you can line up the highs and lows in that cycle with highs and lows in this curve. And I thought, wow, that's pretty amazing. I wonder how it fits with stocks. So I overlaid it on a stock chart, and gee, I found some pretty good correlations. And this one is not that bad of a forecast. You know, if you sold this high right here down to that low, you could have made money. So here was my first tangible evidence that physics affected markets. Now, another thing I learned from my mentor, Ev, uh, was that it was a technique that I published of doing synodic analysis. And the rationale is very simple. If any phenomena exists repeatedly on Earth, it must somehow be harmonized with planetary periods. 
That makes eminent sense if you just look at the physics of the problem. And I made what is probably the best forecast I've ever made. Uh, Larry made sure that none of his students missed it. But I wanted to explain to you why this was such a good forecast. Uh, this is a chart of the Nikkei market overlying the U.S. market. Now, I had an affinity for the Nikkei market because with a different piece of work, I managed to get the top on it within two days. I fortunately told my broker, who at the time, I, I says, you know, the Nikkei market's going to crash. And uh, she called me up and says, well, there are these warrants from, from Denmark on the Nikkei. Do you want some? And they were put warrants. And I says, yeah. And I took $4,000 and, you know, uh, worth and more than doubled it very quickly. I said, gee, you know, this is easy. <laughs> well, you know, then, then times changed and, you know, you only catch one of those. And I didn't think I would find another mania market in my lifetime. And lo and behold, as I'm watching this market and everyone's going, buying stocks, I went to a publishing conference to learn about publishing books. All the the lunchtime time discussion was, who had what stock? The whole public was out buying stocks. And, you know, I said, oh, public's in it. i got to be careful. So I said, okay, how do these two line up? Well, the alignment has been pretty dramatic. This has been published on my website, updated uh, frequently. But we're down now here. We have run the course on this analog. Now, I want to teach you why this worked. But before I do that, I have to teach you something about energy. Okay? Everyone up again. Uh, no singing. No singing, but we're going to do a little clapping. I'm going to be your metronome. You, on this group over here will clap every time I bring my hands to the top. The middle group, every other time. Not every time, every other time. Got it, Larry? Okay. Okay. Now, group over here, even harder, every third time. Okay? Now, I want you all to clap right as my hands touch. Okay? One. Two. Three, four, five. This group should be doing every two, four, five, six. <laughs> We've lost it. <laughs> you stopped out? You're all stopped out. Okay, let's, let's try it one more time. Okay. Every time I do it, every other time, every third time. On time six, everyone clapped. We had a lot more energy. Now, what does that teach you? You can count. <laughs> you can count. Okay, now, this next one is a little more difficult because I want each individual over here to pick a position, not when I quite touch up here, but maybe when I'm here, here, or here. Okay? I just want you to become a little bit dissident. Okay? You folks stay on in harmony every other time. You folks become dissident. Okay? By dissident, don't wait till I touch, do it as I'm parting or separating. Okay? Okay. Sit down, please. <laughs> what do you observe there? We're not musicians. Yeah. That, you're not. <laughs> you, you, you're not good at counting every other time or every third time. <laughs> energy adds together in integer ratios. What's an integer? A whole number. When you hit together exactly when I did this, every one, two, and three times, every sixth time, you would all come together. That's when energy adds maximally, is when things come together in integer ratios. 
if the ratio is a little bit off, you start getting dissidence and things don't start working as well. So there's harmony and there's dissidence. And when you look at markets and look at cycles, you will find points of harmony and points of dissonance. Now, the astrology helps you find points of harmony. But it won't necessarily mean that the point you found is harmonic with the system that you're looking at. Because like a child's swing, you can only push the swing when it's near you. If the kid's out there, you can have all the energy you want here. doesn't help. So this system model says the energy's got to be there, but the market's got to be ready for it. Now, back to the question of why did this alignment work. I felt so confident in it, I put it on my website and updated it. Now, Larry knows that I don't put out too much. Uh, I'm pretty lazy about updating my website, as a matter of fact. Uh, methodology, I published my first article in, uh, in search of the cause of cycles. If you look at the number of days from the peak of the Nikkei market to the peak of the U.S. market is 3900. Right away, that number struck me because that is 360 number in the number of degrees in the circle plus 30 times 10. So then I used a little spreadsheet and I divide that by all the planetary periods. And Mercury Moon, the biblical 40-day uh, period. Not that great a fit, but 98. 40.000 uh, Mercury and Chiron. And I do find Chiron, this little 220 kilometer rock, very important. I picked up on that after reading the book uh, written by the Magi Society, How Astrology, the Astrology of Love and Money. And I, when I researched it, I discovered this little rock has a million mile diameter energy field that pulsates, and physicists don't understand why. I simply put it in my charts, did the flux lines on it, and discovered, yep, it's important. It's truly, truly there. But the closer these ratios are to integers, the tighter of a uh, phenomenal alignment you have. We get down here. You can read them all. The, when you get to the outer ones, the, 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 the numbers pick up to be ratios. Uh, Jupiter and Neptune was very big in this one. Uh, Saturn and the node were in there. Earth and Mars were in there. Look at these ratios. F Earth, Mars is five, and five, six is Neptune, Jupiter. Anyone know how many years it takes for Jupiter and Neptune cycle off the top of their head? How many? Thirteen. How long are my careers? When do I make the changes? On the harmonic of Earth-Mars, look at my natal chart. Mars is square my uh, sun. So it's no accident that I found this stuff and that my career has changed. Now, I simply have listened to astrologers and tried to figure out what the hell is happening to me. Does the mean anything if the Nikkei has been down 13 years? It very well could be, but the Nikkei doesn't run quite on that same cycle. It runs on a on a Uranus cycle. Now this all seemed really well, but when you, I got to a point where there were catastrophic failures. What's wrong with this forecast? It didn't go up here. It went screw, screaming down. Why? I've been blessed and cursed with the why question. I used to come home and ask my mother after wandering in the woods, why do the birds make their nests this way or something like, why is there moss on the south side of the tree? And she would simply look me square in the eye and say, that's your question, you figure it out. If she knew the answer, she'd tell me, but usually she told me to use my head. Well, this cartoon sums it up. Says I've been reading about chaos theory, claims a butterfly flapping its wings in the Amazon can cause a storm on the other side of the world. And we just had one of these in Denver. Uh, uh, the butterfly burps, and they're in a blizzard. Says, do you believe it? It seems unlikely. It seems unlikely, but the universe is built this way. 
There are positive and negative forces, and they balance. This is what gives astrology, the, the chaos plus astrology allow, lets you explain free will. At balance points, you have the will, the ability to choose which path you go, up or down. But the paths are laid out, and you only have two basic choices. Now, I'm going to teach you an engineering course on chaos theory in two minutes. There are two kinds of systems. Linear systems. Linear systems are well-behaved systems and they're easy to write mathematical equations for. This is a little pinwheel. I can spin it. I can compute how fast it'll spin. I can compute how fast it'll slow down. I can compute everything about it. Now, all I have to do is change the system a little bit. and I change its behavior. This is no longer a linear system. I introduced a nonlinear opposing force. These little things have magnets in the end, by the way, if you're mystified by how it works. <laughs> hey, don't laugh. When I got into this research, I asked the best physicist I know, Bell Labs, to explain magnets to me, and he couldn't. And the, the, this little explanation in physics books about the domains aligning is crap. No one has a real good explanation for how magnets work. And if you find one, find a physicist who claims they can explain it to me, make him call me. Now, this shows the principle of chaotic systems. If I put this system in this position, it is at a strange attractor, strange repeller. Now, that's a very simple example of how two forces opposing can create these little strange behaviors. Now let me make this system more realistic. Let me spin them both. And all you have to do to make money in the market is be able to predict what this will do. Right there you see the essence of chaos theory. This thing will come to rest at a stable balance point. But en route to that, it finds several unstable balance points when it can change direction. So one of the things I learned and became a core finding of my market chaos theory is that there are always two solutions. Any system that permits two solutions of behavior, two or more, is by definition chaotic. Because those two solutions will compete at what is called a balance point or strange attractor. And they'll build up energy at that point and then diverge from that point with a vengeance. Markets are provably chaotic. You can, there's a mathematical test for chaotic systems. The S&P passes it big time. Every freely traded market passes. Manipulated markets, by the way, don't. But if you can make a forecast and you learn to flip it over and you find the, that the inverted work, now one of my earliest uh, confirmations of this independently was Larry Pesaveno, his neural net. And Larry, did you find that they inverted? Yep. He found that they inverted. And it turned out that Larry and I had discovered the same phenomena. And if you read something, uh, by someone that tells you that they have a forecast that never inverts, do not believe them because the system is built to have inversions. If it didn't, Larry would have cornered it long ago and we wouldn't have anything to trade. He would have all the money. <laughs> now, why are there inversions in the energy cycles that we feel from the planets? You know, they're out there, boom, 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 boom. We can look at them. Well, what happens is that they launch an electrical impulse along, and an impulse travels, and it hits the ionosphere. And it creates a wave, and our, our, between the ground of the Earth and the ionosphere is what is called in engineering terms a waveguide. Very fascinating waveguide, and I've studied it. It is higher on the dark side of Earth 
than on the low side. And that rising sign, setting sign phenomena is due to this interaction with this sharp shift. Uh, now, when waves travel around the Earth, when they meet each other, one of them was upside down with respect to the other one. So there are always two waves, two electrical waves for every magnetic impulse. And if you track those magnetic impulse sources to planetary configurations, every time that you look at one of these aspects, better be prepared not to work on it alone, because there is no truth to that aspect always being bad or good. Depends on what the system is ready for, and there are always two solutions. Now, I like the fact there are two solutions, but the third option I do not like, in that the system responds to both of them. And you get a market that just keeps fooling you and fooling you and fooling you because it'll follow one tide. I call these things tides. One tide or the other tide. And it'll jump back and forth, and you can spend a whole day going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are the days that you don't want to trade. Maybe Ray Merriman's uh, found the answer uh, uh, to that. Now, as I looked at this, I realized, gee, my most hated courses in graduate school, I avoided them in undergraduate somehow, uh, were, like, were fields and waves courses. These are heavy mathematics. I hated it. And I, I, I was a computer de logic designer. I didn't want anything to do with fields and waves. I wanted, you know, at least I could see a flip-flop flop. I couldn't even see these things. Well, it turns out that I, I had to rely on my knowledge of them that was force-fed to me by my professors to understand that an electromagnetic wave is really two waves, an electric wave traveling straight and a magnetic vector, as they call it, rotating around it. And that leads you to notice some things in markets. All you have to do is take any old chart and see if you can find straight lines. And this happens to look like straight lines blowing away from things. And I've deliberately pointed these arrows backwards. Uh, but you can take any chart and just start drawing lines. Someone asked me at the cocktail party last night for some advice on trading. My advice was get a viewgraph pen, sketch on your screen. See if you can start seeing things. What I told her was sketch closed lines between the lows, closed lines between the highs, and you can see the two forces pushing prices. And I do a lot of that. My, my kids came home from college the first time they found me drawing on a computer screen. They thought old dad had freaked out. <laughs> and both my son and daughter told me and uh, told me that I shouldn't let anyone else see me doing that. <laughs> You can also find arcs. I'm not the first to find them. I just appreciate what they are. These are the rotating magnetic vectors. The lines are the electric vectors. And that led me to a semi-original discovery called the chaos clamshell, which I teach in my cash in on chaos. The chaos clamshell is public information. I have a secret version and top secret version that are called the uh, Honeyla Market Fractal and the Fractal of Pi, which are more mathematically exact versions of this. But this one is very simple and it captures two of the classic uh, ratios used uh, sacred in sacred, sacred geometry. You draw a straight line, draw a quarter circle, draw a straight line, connect the two, sketch seven waves in it. Why seven waves? Now, I call them moves because I want to distinguish this from Elliott wave theory, which to me has gotten too caught up in naming the waves. There are seven moves, and I'm more interested in this boundary curve. That boundary curve is controlled by the number pi. The number pi is an irrational number. It is a dissident number. And like when we were doing dissident clapping, energy can't add there. Energy cannot add to that boundary because that, bo that boundary is controlled by an irrational number. Now, along the diagonal, you're working with the irrational number, the square root of 2. Larry, have you ever heard of the square root of 2? Yes. 
Check it. If it's not Larry's book, it's not a good number. Except he's missing a few, but he's, he's got some re really good ones. Now, how can you use this chaos clamshell? Well, my advice was get a marker pen. And when you look at a chart, first thing I do, if my head is clear and I'm not caught up in the world, is I ask, what am I seeing? Larry has a saying I love, trade what you see. What I see here is a market going down. I also see it's going down for a bit, and maybe I don't want to sell it now. But if I simply do this, draw a line through the electric vector, swing the magnetic vector, see if I can find seven moves. Can you draw that? Now notice how I did that. I, with my body and my energy system that makes me work somehow, doesn't always work in the morning, but I tried to get a feel for the rhythm. And that was not a bad guess. Because the next day early in the morning, move seven completed here, and we had a spectacular rally. That is a fractal pattern. Arch Crawford put up a chart yesterday that I screamed. I kept my mouth shut out of courtesy. I wanted to come up, grab my marker, and put on his chart. It was the one where he's talking about this thing didn't seem to want to turn, and it made a high, and he was looking at the, the uh, elevations or, or, or declinations. And that chart, draw this pattern on it, it was simply waiting for move seven to complete. And there is a classic example of how the system, which draws these clamshells, was waiting for the energy. And it couldn't turn until the swing came back to the parent. Now, if you start doing this, you can also start drawing, playing dot to dot. Markets move dot to dot. As a kid, you played dot to dot. Connect the dots, what do you see? You will find these collections of energy that if you scale a chart right, and I'll tell you, scaling is the most difficult topic uh, there is. But if you get a scale factor that's right, you get a chart that is square, and a chart that is square will show you circles. And these circles will show you things I call fireballs. This is an energy ball. Remember how I had you hold your hands like this? You trapped an energy ball. All of Tai Chi is about catching energy balls and learning to harness that energy into you. Now, as prices approach a strange attractor, they'll try to go to it. They may skirt around it. It can be like a hot stove. Occasionally, they go to dead center. And then they come out of it, and they'll be repelled away. Now, I have a course that I sell to serious traders called the Face of God, which is a tool for finding these. And it, uh, it's a very useful weapon in the war. Now, this is what can happen once you pass the strange attractor repeller. Whereas an attractor turns around and becomes an repeller. Just when you fall in love with this stock or this trade, boom. Well, if you can find these things and you know it's going to turn here, this one happened to turn when when the exchange, let me sharpen the focus on that. This one is an intraday chart. That is where the exchange squared the moon. My moneytie.com website was named because I simply took the two O's from moon, from moon tide, and moved them together and added an EY. Moon and money. Uh, go together pretty well if, if you can get a handle on it. But there was a strange attractor. Nothing happened until it was time, and when time was right, boom, market went south. Now, you saw some planetary lines 
Uh, I've been using them in my own program since 1983. And first, I used them because I found them on a, GAN, on a chart done by GAN. And there was a gentleman in Colorado who published a newsletter for a while called Foster who tried to compute them, but computer technology was pretty miserable back then, as Elfie will attest. Uh, it was almost not worth it. Somehow we persevered. And, but as I was watching our market, one thing I've learned is that these flux lines form pairs an up pair and a down pair. And this one shows Pluto electric flux pair here, and then harmonically above it, another pair. These flux pairs occur at harmonic intervals, and they divide the energy space into quantum levels. Quantum physics works because of this. Now, between these quantum levels, we can get what are called band gap energy jumps. One of my blessings was I had to learn how transistors worked. And to get through my physics course, I had to understand band gap energy jumps. Well, gee, guess what? They occur in markets. So, and they occur on a small scale. I find them, if you follow my day trading hotline or my chaos clinic on Friday, I put up that moon chart. I use the moon, the moon pairs on days when they're pinched like this. The, the, the quantum levels are very crisp. When they're further apart, the quantum levels are fuzzier. So it's one of these phenomena that's there, but it's there more or less clearly. And if you look at it the right time you see it, and you look again, it seems to be gone. It's not. If you, and this is, again, a reason why you compute it with a model, so you can see it when you can't see it. In this case, I was wondering why this mania market started off. I'd read a lot about manias, the Crusades, the tulip bubble, I'd seen the one in Japan. I thought this one might be one. And I just couldn't buy any stocks. I could not make myself buy stocks. And I noticed that we launched here when Jupiter passed Pluto. And we started going up. We passed the balance level here. This is where these two fields cancel each other. And we kept going. And from this line to this line is one energy quantum on a properly scaled chart. Now, as we kept going, I saw that this market did this band gap energy jump here, and that this line here, this gorgeous trend line, violated once in the middle, which is that fourth move of the clamshell. When it was getting up here, I was getting nervous. But along about in here, I decided, I'm missing this thing. Everyone's buying stocks. I may as well buy some. But I was very careful this time. I bought them from a brokerage firm that could execute an order fast, as fast as my commodity broker. So I was watching this, and, on, and I published this on my website. Uh, in, on September 22, 2000. And I said, if this line is broken, sell, sell, sell. Now. I don't usually repeat myself, uh, but that I felt very strongly. If that line was broken, I knew this energy was going up. It seems to be running into trouble here. One, two, three, four drives to a top. Larry tells me three and get out of there. Uh, I was nervous. October 6th, I'm doing my cast clinic. I have a handful of stocks, but not many. I was watching that line on a side screen. It was broken. Ninety seconds later, I was out of all stocks. And I just nibbled on one last week. <laughs> so you can use this stuff, but there, there's actually much more to it. Because part of the problem of using it is computing your energy. When you stand on the Earth, you're standing on the negative end of a battery that's charged on the other end, the ionosphere, to 300,000 volts. Energy flows up through you. You were designed, and the only reason you live is because there's this current flowing up. You're designed to work in an energy field, magnetic field, or the field flows up and rotates this way. This Ionospheric voltage can have surges of 20% in 20 minutes when it's hit with a burst of 
20% of 20 minutes, well, clear up there, would that affect me? You figure out that the voltage on your head standing here, mere six feet, is about 240 volts. The same voltage as is across your oven element in your stove. The only reason you don't glow bright red is you have a higher resistance, about a million ohms. But with a million ohms, you still get external currents flowing through you of 250 nanoamperes. Bio circuits, your decision circuits, work on currents as low as one nanoampere. So a 20% change in the 250 can affect your thought process. And we feel those as emotions. Men were told they didn't have them. <laughs> Women just accept that they do, and they, they, pro they probably make better traders. Now, I thought this was all a little bit crazy until I ran across the book by a farmer named Owen Latham who discovered that you could douse with a chain, an electrical chain. I verified that you could. You could measure electric current. And then one morning I woke up with an equation in my head. El Elfie has a friend that talks to him. <laughs> I don't know who this is that talks to me. Sounds like the big guy or the big girl herself. Get up and write this down. I wrote an equation I call XGO. XGO is the energy that an entity start or received from the universe by this model. I explain it in my book. But basically, I could calculate it. With a chain, I could measure my own energy. And I also discovered that you could increase your energy with something called a bio circuit. So I did a 31-day experiment. Every day I got up, ran down the basement, measured my energy, charged myself up, measured my energy again. That took 45, 50 minutes. Not something I want to do every day, but for 31 days, I wanted to see if any of this theory and calculation fell together. Because I had three suspect parts. At least my engineer said they were suspect. My artist was happy with it. Uh, I had a calculation based upon a theory of how the natal antenna works. I had a way of measuring energy using a dowsing chain, which is not particularly the most socially marketable <laughs> me, uh, scientific instrument, but I think I understand how it works and why we can't build one just like it. And I had this bio circuit that had been researched and used in England for 30 years, and I came up with, I always try to be efficient. I like to have three reasons to do something. One experiment, which is either going to work or not work, and if it worked, it verified all three. So I did this experiment. I had the calculation. I did my charging, and I ma measured the effect of the charging. The three curves are practically identical. That told me that this was probably pretty valid, and I set that aside. Of course, you can do an XGO chart for any market. You simply need, guess what information you need? Anyone guess? First trade date. That's all you need. Or your date of birth. And you can compute XCO charts. Uh, I brought an old Albatross computer. And you can do your own XCO chart. It's a great planning tool. These lows are time when the energy, the universe is charging you, pushing energy into you. You can't go out and charge and make your best sale or your best trade then. You have to relax and accept it. Slow down, Larry. Coming into low, you chart, you're getting charged, whether you want it or not. Don't fight it. That, that's the play time. Then when you pick up the energy, you're going to work. And I just noticed Arch Crawford was on a high in his chart. Grace Morris is on a high in her chart. Larry Pesavano is on a high in his chart. I'm on a high in my Exco chart all this weekend. Is that a coincidence? No. The, the, the convergences do work. They do tend to show up in these charts, and they're, they're a handy tool. At the conference, I sell them for $20. If you, I may not get any of them printed because i got a problem with the computer, but you can order them. If you fill in a form before you leave, I will be here until tomorrow. But if you fill in a form before you leave, uh, uh, we can mail you charts. Now, one of my students says, well, you know, XGO picks up the short swings pretty good, but what about the longer terms? And he took a tool I, I had called a zero-delay filter, and he just started filtering this 
curve. And if you find the right length of an x go, you get the same thing. You get what I call a fractal set. You've seen these pictures of fractal geometry? Well, these two energy waves make fractal sets too. Here's a period, and this is in wheat, where we have the two fields fighting each other, and then a bifurcation, big word used by scientists to scare people away from their area. It means going one of two ways. As my wife says, left or right. <laughs> bifurcation, down to a possible energy low. Now, is that a tradable low? Not yet. My stop is parked right above it because I have a zero delay filter tracking this energy and it's down here in the buy zone. So what I do for trading is I take these energy forecasts and I use tracking indicators to confirm them. I do that with uh, another energy function I call moon tides, which is short-term effect of the moon. can be computed for any market, but I specialize in S&P. This is what my hotline is based on. I make a forecast of moon tides and I say, okay, near this time or near this time, look for an opportunity for a trade. Just cut down the busy work. If you sit there and stare at the screen all day, I'll guarantee you two things. You'll go blind and lose money. If you can back off, come in and select times and just be alert, your chances of making money are a lot better. Then what I do is I use a couple of non-arbitrary length moving averages. These moving averages are sacred numbers. They are set to physical constants. If you're real sharp, you can figure out where the 110 minutes came from. Jim Twentyman figured it out, and he's the only one I know figured it out, and I'm not going to tell anyone else. But uh, it's a good moving average. And all we do, are, we've got a set of trading rules we put on the website I'm not going to go through. Come visit us on Friday. It's free. You can see what we do. You can read the tutorials, and you can see that. Uh, remember that time when I or the chart where I, blew, I drew the chaos clamshell. Not only did I have a clamshell coming down here and energy forecast going up. So that, that was very handy. So just like with the astrology, with the energy calculations, you have to be sure that you're using other tools to sort out reality. So the process I've been involved in is really described this. This is my... This is me down here saying, can't you just zap me with understanding of mysteries of the universe? And the answer is, that's what I am doing over the course of your lifetime. So life is one long, big, long zap. And the answer is, the longer the better you'll come to realize. That means a lot to me because uh, a little over three years ago, I nearly died. I fell on the roof, I ruptured a kidney and bled into my abdomen. And on December 5th, 2 a.m., I woke up in the hospital. And I had been laying there in this hospital bed with these, these machines massaging my legs so I didn't throw a blood clot while my stomach was full of blood. They couldn't do anything except to wait and see if I'd survive. And the wall was gone. The room was dark, and all I saw was stars. And I could feel my my father had passed away, my aunt, and several other people and asked me a question. Are you ready to come? And my answer was, I'm not done yet. <laughs> I'm still not done. I am still in shock and awe of what I see when I look at the universe. <laughs> yes? Have I played that? Uh, the, the, the music, my answer is no. I'm not a musician. I've recently bought an Indian flute because I love the sound of it. And I have albums by Carlos Nakai, the world's leading Indian flutist. And I pick up my flute and listen, put on one of his CDs, and he goes, doo -doo -doo -doo, and I go, <laughs> <laughs> making music is not something I'm good at. Understanding music, I'm better at. Yes? There's a website called spaceweather.com. Yes, there's a link on space weather on spaceweather.com right spaceweather.com has a link on my day trading forecast site that's the other site I go to frequently and it 
but if it had been there when I started out, it would have saved me tons of time. Any other questions? Yes. No, no. The, the, the background radiation of space is every star, every galaxy to the ends of the universe. There's only one energy field. Big Bang, boom. Now within that, there's nothing except little swirls. And if they condense enough, they make a planet or a nebula or a person. And you're all part of that. So they, they, in, this, in my model of how things work, there, there's no such thing as being separate. When you said there was a planet, you weren't going to tell us which one it was. Oh, which tunes that in yeah. and focuses it into that market. I'm not going to tell you. Find out of yourself. <laughs> Do your own homework. <laughs> yes, Arch? Uh, does that remote group thing have anything to do with those bombs? No. Right, but the, the, the master of remote viewing is uh, Joe Mo Montagle. This guy is so good at remote viewing, he can draw engineering drawings of things he can't see halfway around the world. Did that for the atomic bomb, the T-1 tank, and Soviet submarine. <coughs> yes, Larry? Do you still keep an apartment at Area 51? <laughs> <laughs> do I still keep an apartment at Area 51? No, I can't find my phone to call home. <laughs> yes. Do you have a sense of so um, at the top when you scan where the planet what percent uh, does that happen to? I don't even compute those percentages so I can't answer that. Does that I, I I I look at the at the uh, uh, overall pattern. And if something astrological is lining up with it and all fits together, then I make a trade. Any other questions? I'll be on the panel. Also, after, after today's sessions, after the panels are over, if you want to come by my booth, I have a CD that was created by two people at Harvard. That is Kepler's Music of the Spheres realized into music. And it's kind of interesting to listen to. So after everything is over, uh, I'll put it on in the back. Any other questions? I'm not going to answer that. Because if I answered it, you would save everyone else the work 